here with my buddy Chubbs. Today we're gonna talk about fungus gnats and how to kill them. <laughs> uh, cheaply and non-toxically. Because our plants got attacked by an invading army of fungus gnats and it was super gross. And they almost killed all my spinach and they're seriously threatening the um, sweet potato plant and my celery. Uh, the celery is kind of a failed experiment anyway, but I was really hoping that sweet potato would live and I want the spinach too. So uh, first I'll give you a quick update on the downstairs plants and then, and I'll show you the new home of the giant indoor tomato of doom. And uh, then we'll go upstairs and I'll show you how to kick those fungus gnats uh, very easily and cheaply. So for starters, here are the potatoes. As you can see, the regular potatoes are doing quite well. Potato is struggling. The, the fungus gnats have gotten in here pretty bad, and that's, I think, probably why. Um, hopefully, poor little sweet potato will recover. We'll find out. I, I need to get more of my magical fungus gnat solution and apply it to this bucket. Um, but I haven't yet, so. Here, we have some greens that got kind of leggy down here in the dark basement. I'm gonna probably just harvest this whole thing as microgreens, put it on my salad today. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, so if you try growing some greens in a place that has not enough light and they get all leggy and floppy like this, don't worry about it. You just grew microgreens instead. Um, and they taste great and they're super healthy for you. So go you. Here are my celeries. These two are doing okay, but they're still gonna end up in the soup real soon. Here's my romaine. Judging by those stalks that it's made, I think it may have gotten a little too much light up in the sunny window upstairs and switched into seed growing mode instead of leaf growing mode. That's called bolting. But we'll find out uh, when, I, when it gets big enough and I decide to try to eat some if it has kind of a milky fluid inside instead of being clear like the juice you're used to seeing in your lettuce, that means it has bolted. It is not harmful, but it is bitter tasting and kind of unpleasant to eat. We will see. Maybe a little time in the dingy basement will chill it down and it'll go back to leaf mode, who knows. Spinach is coming along. Tomato plant that had that accident the other day, still alive, although somewhat the worse for wear. We'll see how he continues to recover. More greens, I'm gonna take these upstairs so they can get some window sun and hopefully not go super leggy like those other ones. This little guy that is some kind of cousin of lavender seems to be doing okay. Basil plants, two out of three, still doing, coming along strong. That third one was iffy from the beginning, so I had a feeling it was gonna die. One lettuce, uh, excuse me, one celery is not surviving, but that's okay, the compost pile will eat it. This one's still good, even just in water. I was hoping to get a couple of little roots on there before I stuck it in the dirt, but that doesn't seem to be happening. But this one will go in the soup too, and it's all good. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the new home of the giant tomato. Look at that thing, it's a monster. I barely got it down the stairs without breaking off pieces of it. Um, it was harrowing. <laughs> but here it is, and it survived the trip and I didn't fall and drop it and dump it all over the stairs, so it's good. And it's got lots of little flower buds that will hopefully become more tomatoes for us. Although it's been a little stressed, so we've got some blossom drop going on here. So that little bunch is not gonna turn into tomatoes, but that's okay. We still have a big healthy tomato plant. And our first tomato beginning to blush. This might be the only one that will ripen while it's indoors because it's cooler in the basement. But this one we should get to eat before the spring. Um, even if none of these ripen indoors though, this is still not a loss because look at this big, beautiful, healthy tomato plant and all those flower sets. It's gonna have fruit all over it, even if we have to wait six months to eat it. <laughs> so even if all this does is just overwinter in here, we'll be off to a great start in the spring. But who knows? We are gonna keep this experiment going as long as we can, see what happens. And now upstairs, 
where I will show you the super duper gnat killing secret that your kids will want to play with and spread all over your house. I apologize for the clutter. It is, I would make some excuse about something, but the truth is it's always like this. So, see that stuff around my plants? That is sand. And that is enough to stop the fungus gnats in their tracks. They can't dig down through the sand to get to the dirt to lay their eggs, and the adults have a very short lifespan. So when they die, then that's the end of the fungus gnats. I had originally bought this bag of little bag of sand for to root some cuttings from a black raspberry plant that I know of, but uh, this is a better use, I think, because it's keeping my existing plants from dying. My poor little spinaches got chomped almost to death here, but I think they'll recover. And my kale, my baby kale and Swiss chard are doing really well. Watercress too. My poor little tomato cutting not doing so well. I think the fungus gnats just were too much for it. All right, Chubbs is getting fussy. That's the update. If you get fungus gnats, sand is the answer. And if you have any other green ideas, just grow for it. Because if I can do it, you can do it. Bye.